I'm very happy today to speak with you about the rationale for treatment. This is the third episode and I'm happy to break this section into three segments because there's a lot that we can learn that will guide and influence our clinical actions. Let's look at the rationale for treatment focusing on the mandibular teeth anatomy. Well, before I get started, I want to review that when we speak about the rationale for treatment, it involves the six steps that guide us step by step to successful conclusion. The first step would be diagnostics. The second step would be complete access. The third step would be glide path management. And once we have a secured canal, or that means a canal that has a secured, reproducible, and smooth glide path, then we can shape that canal. And then shaping allows us to get more reagents into the critical areas and we can activate these reagents and move them into the deep lateral anatomy and following disinfection if we've done everything properly we would fill a root canal system that is the rationale for treatment and we're going to look at these steps and focus on various teeth where we use these steps to get the results that we're going to observe together Frank Paquet is a guiding light in international endodontics in that he continues to show us beautiful micro CT scans that show us the anatomy in a minimally invasive way. So if you look at the case on the right, you can see that many of the teeth that you're looking at have been prepared for splint dentistry. So when a tooth becomes endodontically involved, we need to get both systems. So in the rationale for treatment, we know that the mandibular anterior teeth about 50% of the time have a second system. So I really want to reemphasize multiple different horizontally angulated films so we can better appreciate the buccal lingual dimensions of any given incisor. Notice the two systems that were shaped and the multiple apical portals of exit. Now when we access into a mandibular incisor, like in this image, the air typically has been historically that the access cavity has been rounder in nature and more centered on the lingual surface. This means that many dentists have missed the most frequently not identified canal and that's the more lingual canal. So access cavities need to be extended lingually at the expense of the cingulum to find the more lingual branch. I want to also mention that there's a lot of external root fluting. So when you find a ribbon shaped canal maybe it's kind of like a figure eight or a dumbbell, don't be trying to run out the inner connector and make it the same size as the facial and lingual branches because because of the external fluting, you might impinge on that fluted root and thin the root and predispose it to a strip perf or an overt perforation. I'd like to show you this tooth because there's only one culprit here endodontically, but it would be easy to miss the diagnosis if we didn't pulp test these various traumatized mandibular incisors. This is a football injury, and you can see that falling trauma and about a year and a half later, this little kid has a diffuse, massive lesion. This lesion is encompassing two roots, and it's even causing divergence with those two roots. But there's only one culprit, and with proper diagnosis, we can go in here and carefully clean, shape, and pack, and out with the lateral canal. Now, when I say out with the lateral canal, there's actually three. Two of them are in the primary beam, either coming at us or away from us. And then, of course, there's a rope of gutta percha going out the lateral aspect of the root. Listen, many of my friends internationally are Italian. If you are Italian, I know you like pasta. Si, spaghetti, si di italiano. This is a rope of gutta percha, much like a rope of pasta. And you can notice it's going out and exiting, and it's in that large lesion. But notice how much healing has occurred just in six weeks. I'm going back to the pre-op. Now I'm coming back to the post-op. And in six weeks, notice the healing already taking place. Of course, healing becomes much more complete 21 years later. Notice how the macrophages have sawed off that rope of gutta percha. 
It's lying harmlessly in the bone. Healing has become complete. The roots have realigned themselves with no orthodontic intervention. So endodontics is a very predictable procedure to eliminate infection that is odontogenic in origin. And of course, let's go back and look at Frank's work. Frank always will get us tuned in to the assignment that lies ahead clinically. And clinically, these single-rooted, oftentimes fused-looking roots hold crazy anatomy. Notice in this particular case, it's an anterior abutment. There's an access cavity into a single ribbon-shaped orifice. You wouldn't know that, but I was the clinician. But you can see at mid-root, the system splits just like Frank's case. And you can see that at about mid-root, there are three systems. And then they merge apically and rebifurcate. Notice the puffs at the end of the terminal extents of those canals. Complete endodontics is the sine qua non for long-term success, like this case. Simple endodontics, a mandibular bicuspid. Notice the diffuse lesions, one laterally, distally, one apically, both treated. This mandibular second bicuspid has simple, large system, roller coaster kind of a shape, but notice all the anatomy that's picked up during obturation, but notice the cleaning that would have had to have happened to even have the opportunity to move obturation materials into these cleaned out spaces. Now, when you look at this mandibular second bicuspid that has not yet been restored, Notice, apically, there's three portals of exit. That would be hard to do with a silver point unless you used a multiple warhead silver point. Oh, come on, don't be so serious. That was a joke. But you can begin to see that sometimes in these bicuspid teeth, you're beginning to appreciate there's an enormous potential for diverse, and I repeat, diverse variation in anatomical form. Look at the mesial root on the mandibular molar as an example. Notice the crown is not fitting so well, but notice in the mesial root in the apical one-third, there's already a thickening of the periodontal ligament space. This is a tooth that needs endodontics, and it's an opportunity that lies just ahead. So here's another mandibular bicuspid. It's carrying the anterior load on a long splint, I was aware that there were two systems. I was working two systems, but I really want to emphasize and come back to the rationale for treatment where we talk about the importance of well-shaped canals because well-shaped canals become well-filled canals because the step in between shaping and filling is disinfection and the secret is active irrigation. So if we look at a mandibular molar and we spin it around, Frank showed us the ubiquity of multiple apical portals of exit. Like the tooth I treated on the right with wave one, a single file technique, one single 2508 instrument prepared three systems, but notice the mesial root. Notice there's a mid-mesial coming off in the apical one-third, a considerably large lateral canal off of both the mesial and distal systems. I'm telling you, how could you do this for over 30 years if these canals weren't systems? It would become boring. Okay, this mandibular molar is kind of unusual because of the mesial root. Notice how the curvatures of the MB and the ML cross over each other, and you kind of have this X marks the spot, but the distal root was fun as well. Three apical portals of exit. One system dividing into three apical portals of exit. Furcal canals, multiple portals of exit, the distal root of this mandibular molar. This is what endodontics is all about. I want to bring you some good news. Ruddle does not know all these lateral canals are even present. I'm just like you. I'm instrumenting the main system. I'm now shaping that system and giving it more emphasis but it's my reagents that are cleaning out laterally into the deep lateral anatomy. It is my reagents that remove tissue. And remember Newton's laws of physics? 
Only one mask can occupy the same space at the same time, so we have to remove tissue to create sufficient space to move warm obturation materials into the anatomy of any given tooth, like this tooth. This mandibular molar apparently had four orifices, four systems, but notice between the MB and the ML, there's anastomosine. There's another whole system that moves on apically with its own portal of exit, distal system. Look very, very carefully and you'll notice the three portals of exit. Okay, you might wonder what we're doing salvaging this tooth, but this woman has been able to maintain this furcation for 15 years. Finally, the patient exacerbated following a cleaning visit from the dental hygienist. When those gracies run over these external root surfaces, we need to be mindful that it is possible to disrupt blood flow into an endodontic tooth. So in this endodontically treated tooth, you can notice there are two lateral exits in the coronal one-third of the mesial system. In fact, the more coronal exit is larger than the size of the terminal part of the canal where I put files and shaped. Notice the apical bifidity and the distal lingual root. Notice I did not say a distal lingual canal. There is a distal buccal and distal lingual separate root structures. So this lady now will have a great opportunity with her pipe cleaners to continue to maintain the furcation until such time as she loses this abutment. Well, you can begin to see in this mandibular left molar massive lateral canal to a crestal lesion. Notice the sealer trail, but the rationale for treatment is complete endodontics. And look at this furcation involvement. So the gutta percha cone is tracing through the buccal sulcus to a lesion of endodontic origin. And of course, great endodontics not only treats the radicular portion of the roots, but it treats the pulpal floor and we must think of the pulpal floor as an extension of endodontics and get hydraulics and drive sealer or obturation materials into available anatomy. You can probe these things oftentimes 30 days after closing off the access cavity, in this case with a bonded amalgam, and you can notice the tissues blanching and the probe goes in about two millimeters, so we've regained attachment just doing endodontics alone. And finally, this last case is something that's a little provocative. It's provocative because when you look at it, you're thinking that puff of sealer in the furcation is just too big. So here's the history. I made an access through an all gold crown. The gold crown disrupted and flew off during access. I put a Unitec orthodontic band around the tooth so I would have reference points so I would have a reservoir to confine my reagent to the pulp system. And in the event that it was too visited in endonics, which it was not, I would still be able to better provisionalize and protect the tooth from fracture post endodontics. So I did one visit on this tooth and you are looking at my post-operative film immediately after treatment. Now, I asked the patient before treatment if I could do two surgeries and the patient was not happy to find out that I want to do surgery, especially when I divulged to them that the surgeries were completely elective. The surgeries were to let Ruddle be a better teacher so I could show you something through photography that could be used as an educational event. So following endodontics, what we did is we put the crown back on this tooth and I repaired the access window that I had started cutting on before the crown disrupted. Then we took a 15C scalpel and made a buccal incision and pulled back a full thickness flap. And all we did is take a photograph of the restored crown and my amalgam repair. We did not use any curettes. We did not uh, denucleate the furcal lesion. We did not put any membranes in here or freeze dried bone, just endodontics. Notice the size of this lesion compared to the preoperative film. Now we put the tissue back and sutured and dismissed the patient. I saw the patient two years later and two years later took out a 15C, pulled back a full thickness flap and here's how it looked two years later. Notice how the bone has risen to the surface. Notice how the bone has completely repaired 
and filled in not only furcally but around that distal root. So the tissue was repositioned. Again, six out sutures approximated and closed the wound. And I was only doing the surgeries to show you the power of complete endodontics. Okay, I have visually let you observe through surgical photography the healing. Let's look at this patient at the same exact day that I did this surgery, but let's observe the healing radiographically. And here you can see how tight that bone is around that furcal puff of sealer. Now I know many of you with the flaps back would have felt compelled to get a Gracie into the furcation and remove the granulomatous tissue. You then would have probably wanted to use freeze-dried bone and fill up the furcal lesion. Probably would have employed a membrane of some type all in the name of great periodontics. What I want to get you thinking about is the capacity for endodontic healing when it has been complete treatment. Okay, so we've looked at some mandibular molars. We'll look at one last one. And that's just to keep talking about the rationale for treatment and to bring you back to those six steps. Diagnosis, complete access, glide path management, shaping canals, disinfecting, and filling root canal systems. And what I want to bring you back to is that step called access. And when you access, you will almost invariably see that little groove between the MB and the ML orifices. It is wise to run that groove out with ultrasonics so that you can rule in or rule out if there's a mid-mesial orifice in that groove. You will find out that if you do this and begin doing it starting from now on, you will on occasion find a mid-mesial. What's important to say here is when you find a mid-mesial, remember to shape it a little bit more conservatively as you would have otherwise shaped your MB and your ML. The reason being is a mid-mesial is positioned exactly where there's a furcation. And because of the external furcation, we don't want to shape that canal out too big and entertain a strip perf or weaken the root and predispose it to a longitudinal fracture. I hope this segment on the rationale for treatment with focus on mandibular molars and anterior and bicuspid teeth will make you a better clinician and will improve your endodontic skills.